And uh, we pray that the Holy Spirit will help us to understand and he gives us the heart to accept and to walk and to move in his word. So the word of God we are going to share today, we can say the topic is, we can say is becoming a living godliness. Becoming a living godliness. The last phrase could be, that phrase with the different meanings, living godliness. Either it is the godliness that is living or lively, or it's me who is living the godliness. But the meaning I want us to, to have there is me living godliness. Or having a living godliness in me. As you know, this year we have been talking much about pursuing godliness. And we have talked much about it, pursuing godliness, having the knowledge of godliness, having the desire, sharing about godliness, purity, holiness. But this coming year, let us move from one glory to another glory. The other level of glory we want to encourage each other to, to move into, it is the glory of becoming godliness. Godliness to be an integral part of me and of you. Let godliness, which is godlikeness, be an integral part of you. That is the very you. If we are falling short of God-likeness, it means we are falling short of the intentions of God. Because in the beginning, in the book of Genesis, we read that God said in his counsel, let us make men in our image and after our likeness. That likeness is God-likeness. It is the likeness of God. That is a human being in the mind of God, which is you and I having this image. When God speaks of a human being, he is speaking of a human being with his image and his likeness. And today, this is the point we are going to share, becoming the likeness of God or becoming the living likeness or godliness of God. We shall be referring to some other portions of scripture. And the main thing is we move around, we move with the sharing. Let us open our hearts and submit our hearts to the spirit. Because as, you, as we will be sharing, the Holy Spirit will be opening some avenues of understanding in each one of us depending on the levels of where you are. This I know. So let us listen attentively 
and participate in our spirits. As we look into this topic, becoming a living godliness. Let the godlikeness be alive in you and in me. Let the image of God be revealed or be seen in us. When we reach those levels, a perfect being is produced according to the mind of God. As we read in Genesis, let us make man in our image. Again, in Genesis, it uses man. The word man in Genesis, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean a male human being only. It means a male and a female man. It's an umbrella word. So God says, let us make man after our image. The reason why we are sharing this word today, it needs our pra practice or our involvement in becoming the godliness of God. It is not going to be an easy way or a cheap, a cheap way of becoming because it is not easy to become because the devil does not want us to become that living godliness of God in us. The God likeness. He fights it very well and he is determined even to destroy it. That's why in the whole world, sometimes you see people, they don't want to read the Bible. Because the moment you start to read the Bible, the light, the picture of who you are starts to jump from the Bible into you. So this is an important exercise. Let us start by opening the word of God from the book of James. Let us go to the book of James chapter two. The book of James is just after the book of Hebrews in New Testament. As you go towards the end of the Bible. The book of James. We are going to read from. Let us start by reading from chapter one. Verse 22. To the end, then we go to chapter 2, we read from verse 14 to the end. Let us read. Is there anyone who is prepared to read for us? James chapter 1, verse 22. Yes. Reading New Living Translation. But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says, otherwise you are only fooling yourselves. For if you listen to the word and don't obey it, it is like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourselves walk away and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it is, it says, and don't forget what you have heard, then God will bless you for doing it. If you claim to be religious, but don't control your tongue, you are fooling yourself and your religion is worthless. 
Pure and genuine religion in the sight of God the Father means caring for the orphans and widows in their distress and refusing to let the world corrupt you. Amen. Chapter two. Yeah, we'll continue just wait a bit. So from that portion of scripture, we are being encouraged not only to be listeners of God's word, but yeah. doers of God's word. Now, this sharing of becoming God-likeness, we can we cannot talk about it without talking about faith. We will see how faith is the, el the essence of becoming the God-likeness. Because in various portions of scripture, we see and hear God encouraging us or commanding us to be like him. And we are being encouraged to imitate him. He says, I am holy, therefore be holy. I am a righteous God, therefore be righteous. I have loved you, therefore go and love one another with the love I have loved you with. Which means this word of God is the word that is demanding the doing from us. If we are to take an account, how many gospels do we just listen to after preaching them? We say, oh, it was nice, it was nice. The minutes go by, hour, hour go, hours go by, day go by, you, you forget. Don't be listeners only but be doers of the word in each preaching we hear from anyone else we might not remember the whole sermon or the whole preaching but we must have one word which is a verb from all the preaching which we must exercise on because the word of God is the doing word. Amen. Oh. Right. Let us continue. Chapter 2, verse 14. Chapter 2, verse 14. Faith without God. Sorry, faith without good deeds is dead. Okay, sorry, sorry, it will continue. Before we read that one, can we read a portion of scripture from the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 2? Then we come back. Let us go back to Hebrews, chapter 4, chapter 4, verse 2. What does it say? Hebrews chapter 4 verse 2 says, for this good news that God has prepared, for this good news that God has prepared this rest has been announced to us just as it was to them. But it did them no good because they didn't share the faith of those who listened to God. Mm. Amen. 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 Yeah, you can hear that this same gospel was preached to others, but they didn't benefit from this gospel. The other version said, because they didn't mix this gospel with faith. No. Therefore, what they had never benefited them. Because they were supposed to mix this word of God with faith Amen. so that they benefit. Amen. But they were only listeners, is what the book of James is saying. 
Right. Now let's go back to our uh, chapter, chapter two in the book of James. And we read now. Now we know that this gospel we are hearing now, right? It was preached before to others. But they didn't mix it with faith. So they didn't benefit from the word. Even as we talk now, some people have left this world without Christ. Even if Christ, even if Christ was being preached here on earth, they missed it or they heard it, but they didn't mix it with faith. And they didn't take it seriously. And as a result, they didn't benefit from it. Yes. So let us be very careful when it comes to the word of God. It doesn't matter who is preaching about it. Whether it's being preached from Mazibaba or it's mm -hmm. being preached from Maso, when they ever they preach and open this book, mm -hmm. let us be very careful. Mm -hmm. Because a statement one day might be given to us like it was given to Davis. Say, if they don't listen to Moses and the prophets down there, they will come the same way. If we don't mix this word with faith, we won't benefit from this word. This is what we are looking at today, becoming a living godliness or becoming the likeness of God in us. It is brought about by mixing this word with faith. Therefore calls us to pause or analyze or explain what is really faith even though we have some other understanding of it. But it is not limited to that. Let us read from chapter two of James, verse 14 to verse 26. Reader, over to you. Uh, James chapter two, reading from verse 14, the title is Faith Without Good Deeds is Dead. What good is it, dear brothers and sisters? If you say you have faith, but don't show it by your actions, can that kind of faith save anyone? Suppose you see a brother or sister who has no food or clothing, and you say good day, goodbye, and have a good day. Stay warm and eat well. But then you don't give that person any food or clothing. What good does that do? So you see, faith by itself isn't enough. Unless it produces good deeds, it is dead and useless. Now, someone may argue, some people have faith, others have good deeds. But I say, how can you say, how can you show me your faith if you don't have good deeds? I will show you my faith by my good deeds. You say you have faith, for you believe that there is one God, good for, if, good for you. Even the demons believe this and they tremble in, in terror. How foolish. Can't you see that faith without good deeds is useless? Don't you remember that our ancestor Abraham was shown to be right with God by his actions when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see, his faith and his actions worked together. Mm. His actions made his faith complete. And so it happened, just as the scriptures say, Abraham believed God and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. He was even called the friend of God. So you see, we are shown to be right with God by what we do, not by faith alone. Mm. Amen. Amen. Proceed and finish. 
Those last oh, two no. verses. Okay, 25. Rahab the prostitute is another example. She was shown to be right with God by her actions when she hid those messengers and sent them safely away by a different road. Just as a body, so just as the body is dead without breath, so also faith is dead without good works. Amen. 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 Wow. Amen. That portion of scripture is powerful because it shows us the importance of mixing the word with faith. Because the Bible teaches us that this faith comes by hearing this word. But when it comes by hearing this word, you need to, to mix it again with this word for it to work. If we read from Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, it is clear that we are new creatures in Christ, as is told in 2 Corinthians 5.17. But in Ephesians, it says, God created us anew in Christ Jesus for good works. If we are to claim that we are new creatures, a new creation in Christ Jesus, I have to support that by the good works I have to do. Because it is the good works I do that vouches or that testifies my being a new creation in Christ. Not my word of mouth. I was baptized. I'm a new, uh, new creature in Christ. I believe in Jesus. The Bible says even demons, they believe that Jesus is the son of God. And we know from the Bible, they were crying to him, say, you son of God, why, why have you come? They believe that. So our belief in God, saying God is there, I believe Jesus is the son of God, without mixing that with faith, it's useless. And we have seen in Hebrews that there are some who heard what we are hearing now, but they did not mix it with faith. And they didn't benefit from what the word is saying, which means we can hear what the word of God is saying about me. But if I don't take a step to mix what I have heard with my faith, it won't be of any benefit to me. I heard the word of God that I need to repent for me to be a believer. I took action. I took a decision and I put that what I had in action of submitting myself to Christ. And I confessed my sins to God. And I said, God, I want to follow you and make you master of my life. And I was baptized. Those actions, those actions I went through are the actions working on the word of God, mixing what I had for me to become. I could have ignored the word and not acted upon it. That was not going to make me a believer, a follower of Jesus because of, I, of the words I heard. I heard it, but I acted upon the word I heard. 
my acting upon the word of God I had made me to be. We can hear the promises of God. If these promises of God, we don't act upon them, they will remain promises and you will never become. So my encouragement today is let us act on the word of God we read and we hear for us to become what that word is saying it is. For James is showing us clearly that if we are hearers only, we are really fooling ourselves. We need to be hearers and doers of this word. So to me, from there, from that point, I concluded that faith is not only belief. Faith are things. Faith are things. Faith are things. The things you believe, that is your faith. Faith is a process of bringing that thing you believe into manifestation. Faith is your acting upon the word of God. That is faith. For without acting upon that word, your faith, according to book of James, he says it is dead. There is no life in it, which means my action, working on the word of God, it is my very faith. That is how I mix the word of God I heard, I hear, with my faith, with my action. My action working on it is my faith. So faith is the action you put on the word. Even if we go to the popular definition of faith in Hebrews 11, quoting King James Version, it says faith, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. And it is the very evidence of the unseen things. It is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of unseen things. So faith is things. Working on those things is process of faith. It is not only a confession that I believe in Jesus. Jesus is my savior. Because when we go to the book of T Titus, it tells us that even though we are believers, they are things that supports or that are important, necessary to accompany our believing in God. That thing, those are faith, which are things. Let me give a simple example for us to see that faith, as James is showing us, that look to Abraham, he was promised a son, and was given. But God demanded that son. But 
Abraham, James, Weaver, he offered the son as an act of believing the word. And that act of working on the of working on the word of God is what is called the faith that will justify us, according to the book of James we have read. Abraham was justified because of the action he took when he heard the word of God, give me your son. Here is my example to, un to understand that faith are things or faith is the process. And also faith is the connection between the unseen world and the visible world. That is our connection. Because what God has promised is in the spiritual world. But we are connected to that by faith. And the faith is God's formula to bring the unseen into the seen world. We can do that by acting upon the word of God. We are drawing from the spirit into the physical when we act upon it. Here is an example. If we, we think that Okay, let me go to the university. I register for a degree in civil engineering. I have decided to be an engineer. This is what it means. I, it means I have to convert myself into a civil engineer. I have to become a civil engineer. That is a promise I'm giving to myself. But that promise, it has to be worked on to become. Otherwise, it will remain a wish. So faith, it is the working on the hope that you have given yourself. I've given myself the hope of a civil engineer. And I have to work on it for me to become. The process, including hope, and the process of me to become a civil engineer, all that process is called faith. Unless I work on the requirements of a civil engineer, I will never become. Even though I, in me, I have, I have promised myself that I am a civil engineer. You know, some of the people, most of the people, all of us, in fact, we come here on earth, we don't just come. Some come as teachers, some come as pilots, some come as presidents, some come as engineers, but they don't become an engineer the moment they are given birth. Even though from God they are said these are pastors. You don't become a pastor because you were born. The, the Holy Spirit says this one is a pastor. You have to become. And that process of becoming what you are already in the spirit is what is called faith. Without that process, that word upon you will never materialize. So working on the word of God makes me to become what that word of God says. So we are working on the godliness of God. Unless I work on that, acting on it, I will never become the godliness, the godlikeness of God. 
if I don't do assignments for civil engineering, I don't attend lectures at the university or at the college, I will never become, even though I have got a word of prophecy all over me saying I am an engineer, if I don't go through the process, I will never become. Because it is the process that converts the invisible into visible. Faith is our connection of what God has provided in the spirit. Unless we act on that, it will remain a promise in the spirit. But let us act on this word and convert whatever God has promised us in the spirit so that it will become, so that I become. At the end, when I finish my course of engineering, at the end, I call myself an engineer. The world call myself, ah, oh, yeah, he's an engineer because I have finished the course. It means I have done what is required to be done. The process of doing what is required to be done is, is me converting myself the way I think, the way I talk, the way I hear, the way I see things into a mind of an engineer. And at the end, I am a civil engineer. But do you see the civil engineering in me when you look at me? Can you say, oh, this is civil. I can see civil engineering in him. You can't see it. It's invisible. But I have converted myself into an engineer. But what you see is what the, the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, the second part of verse 1, which says, it is the assurance of things hoped for. Or it is the evidence of things hoped for. It has moved from faith is the substance because the substance is your working on it. At the end, there is, it is the assurance of things hoped for, which means at the end, I'll, I'll, I'll receive a degree certificate confirming that I have gone through the process and I am now an engineer. But when you look into me, you don't see it. But what you need is the assurance of what things I hope for, which is the certificate. But when you look at the certificate, it doesn't tell you, but it is there only for as an evidence, as an assurance that you, you can have an assurance in me that you are talking to an engineer because I have presented my, set, my degree certificate to you as a civil engineer. And on that basis, you look into me and regard me as a civil engineer, but you don't see the civil engineering in me. It is invisible, but it is there. So godliness, it is only evidence in the good works we are supposed to do, which God says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, we are created anew in Christ Jesus for good works, not in other works, for good works. So how do we convert ourselves into a living godliness? into a godly likeness person. We have to act on the word of God. We need to pray the word of God in our hearts, always. It is not easy because sometimes you forget. The moment you remember it, continue in your heart. Praying the word of God. Confessing what you are in Christ Jesus. What Christ has done for you. It is what you, we pray in our hearts. Thanking God for what he has done. I'm converting myself into God likeness. Because this is what God says I am. 
And this is what I am confessing. By confession, you don't need to understand how you become a, a miracle worker, son of God. You don't need to understand how miracles work. You need just to confess it. If God has given you that gift. Yes. We need to meditate on the word of God. What the word says, we are, you are. Think about it. Meditate about, think over and over about it. By so doing, you are putting what you are meditating in you. You can agree with me. You can pass through or you can hear somebody playing his own music, which you don't know. But the moment you leave the place, you find yourself that music playing in you. How come? Where is it playing in you? It is in your heart. It is in your blood. When, when we say, let us meditate on the word of God, we are taking the word of God into our spirit, into the system, into the systems which we cannot control with our conscious mind. That is what meditation of the word of God does in us. Even if, why, why it is like that? You know, in the world, somebody can cast a bad spell on you. You are not there, but they are casting a bad spell on you. But you find yourself experiencing what they've said on you, on your life. And you are not there. What actually means is there is another system behind our consciousness that we are not in control. And that controls our lives. And that is connected to us through our heart. Yes. So when we meditate, we are putting that word of God into our blood. Sometimes our mouth can lie to doctors. How are you feeling? Uh, my headache is here. And the doctor said, I, I know headache. There's no headache unless the stomach, there's problem in the stomach. Uh, how is it? I'm feeling, I think I've got that, I've got that. But you are the owner of the body, you can't tell. You, are, you want somebody to tell you. It's amazing. What the doctor does is, he doesn't rely on your word of mouth, even though you are the owner of the body. What the doctor relies mostly is what your blood is saying. The blood speaks. That's why they take blood samples and test them. Because the blood hears. The blood speaks. That's why a child in the in mother's womb, when you play music, when the, that child comes out, you find music in that child. He was absorbing the music in his blood even though he was not conscious of absorbing it. This is what happens when we meditate on the word of God. So it is praying the word of God, meditating on the word of God, practicing the word of God in our conversation. When we speak, let us speak the word. Even if we don't quote that it's from Hebrews chapter 1, chapter 1, verse 2, it says this, God says, just to take the words there which are of the Bible and mix them in your conversation as you speak. Your heart will tell you that this is the word of God. I've come across it. And it will tell you, by so doing, we are becoming, we are working on our becoming God-likeness. Praying the word of God, meditating the word of God, talking the word of God. What we converse, we mustn't just converse people to backbiting. Why can't we backbiting them with blessings? Let us bless them. Backbite people with blessings, not cursing. Our mouths are not blessed to, to curse, but they are blessed to bless. Yes. So in our conversation, let us involve the word of God in our conversation and working willingly, willingly 
to do what God says we must do. That is the process we can become the human being God made in Christ Jesus, whom he promised in his counsel from time back, let us make men in our image after our likeness, which is after his godliness. If we work on the word, we will become what we are working on. I will never become an engineer if I don't work on it, if I don't submit assignments, if I don't attend lectures, I will never become. It will remain a wish and it will die a wish because I heard that I can become. If I don't work on it, I will never become. So many people heard about this word. It's being preached all over the world. Some they listen to it as good, as good music, as something to entertain their ears, seeing how, pro, how, pro, how, how fluent the person speaks, how he joins his words, what he is saying and doing. We are hearing it. And after that, we forget about it. It doesn't help. Let us read the word of God for us to become what the word of God says we are. Saints of God. Let us move from one glory into another glory. From one level of understanding into another level of understanding. From one level of wisdom into another level of wisdom. And that is brought about when we start to work on the word of God. It is a journey. You used to lie, but each time lies come, close your mouth, say, no, 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 no. I'm working on not becoming a liar, but I'm working on becoming a faithful person, a reliable person. You have to work on in order to become what the word of God says you are. You will never become what the God, word of God says you are unless we work on it. Shalom. Saints of God, I say shalom. May the Lord, may the Lord richly bless you and enable you to do what the word of God says it can do.